what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. So Kim, welcome back again. You've uh, been jetting all over the place recently, huh? Yeah, it was a, February was a busy month for me. It's kind of, I'm glad to have nothing on my agenda for March right now. So, but just returned home from Hawaii yeah, I was pretty jealous about that because it was, uh, let's see, well, I guess it wasn't when we had the blizzard, but it was certainly very cold here last weekend in Rhode Island. It was like in the 20s, so it was like back to full winter after like the week before it was 70, so it was kind of crazy. So yeah, I was looking at your beautiful photos, the sunsets and the waves and the, um, of course, the flowers. Uh, makes me really miss it. I know, it's such a beautiful island and destination. I just fell in love and I couldn't wait to come home and, you know, start talking the family into planning a trip because it is, there's just, I mean, we had a lot of rain even uh, there. It was unheard of kind of, they're having kind of crazy weather, just like a lot of us are around the nation. And they were you know, expecting quite a bit of rain. And we did have a couple days of rain, but other days, you know, the islands are so, the, they have so many little microclimates, the way things work. A few days it said it was going to pour and we actually got a little bit of clearing and were able to explore. So I still loved experiencing the island and we had some gorgeous sunrises and sunsets and of course beaches. And it really, really is a pretty magical place. And you went to two islands that I haven't been to. Um, you went to, you went to Oahu and Kauai. Correct. Yeah. So started off in Oahu and then did a flight over to Kauai. So it was my first time ever flying Hawaiian Airlines. Have you ever flown them? Yeah. When we went, we flew we flew into Honolulu and then all the inter island things were Hawaiian Air. So we yeah. did. Um, yeah, to the Big Island and then Maui. I remember, I think Hannah still has like a little pin that they gave her. <laughs> Um, when she was on board and um, did they give you like some really good juice or something? I remember like nice drinks, even though the flight was really short. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. On the inner island flight. So I flew into Honolulu and then we drove over to Waikiki and that's where I stayed for uh, three days. So we were in like Oahu and the flight there, what's so cool is that it has a, the flight from the States is, um, they actually serve meals in coach still with a glass of wine if you want it. Shocking. So it's unheard of. I was shocked. Yeah. So um, that morning I left out of Seattle and then I was served like a egg and pepper sandwich and um, some fruit and um, coffee. I didn't take, I don't think wine was served for that one, but on the way back it was a dinner meal. So I had a yummy like chicken and rice and it was pretty good food I mean it's airline food but it was pretty good and then they also gave you a glass of white or red of your choice so very cool but on the inner island flights like you said uh, I flew we went out of Honolulu over to Lahui on um, Kauai and yeah they you get a little um, it's like those plastic we I, I remember them as a kid uh, plastic juice cups that are like little bowls with the foil lid oh yeah. yeah yeah exactly so they had a water one and then they had like a orange guava one but it it's like contains two percent juice or something like that yeah. and um yeah it was kind of kind of sweet but still fun one of the things we definitely fell in love with in Hawaii was guava juice, though. And I think there was even like maybe guava syrup or something for pancakes. I, there were so many, of course, food related things. I remember we brought back like a coconut syrup and we started making like macadamia nut pancakes with coconut syrup. But you know, it was like trying to recreate our Hawaii experience at home. Didn't yeah. do as well. Yeah, they kind of it's it's interesting to hear all about it because there's all these different influences they've had. But, uh, you know, for their breakfast, they serve like a standard Hawaiian breakfast is like Portuguese sausage and um, rice. And so I saw that at our hotels a lot. And then we also had um, malasadas. And oh, yeah, I've never had those. Oh, so it's just like these really puffy donuts. 
and they're really popular on the islands. And again, it's a Portuguese thing that was brought over and they were so good. I really liked them. So kind of got spoiled on that. But food is definitely an interesting component of Hawaii, I think. So yeah, the food was good. It was kind of fun. I, I ate one of the places I stayed. So I stayed at the Double Tree Hilton Waikiki when I was in Oahu. And I had breakfast there with them. And then one night I had dinner with the manager at that property. And she also gave me I'll have to look up the exact name of it for the show notes. But I want to say it was spam um, musubi. And basically, it was kind of like California, a California roll, but with spam on the inside. So they put like a strip of spam, roll it in uh, rice, then roll it in seaweed and deep fry it. And so I guess it's a common thing there. And one of the other people that was with us on our trip, she said it's a common thing that people like grab at the local market to take to the beach with them. So it's kind of a egg roll, I guess, of sorts that people just pack along. So I thought that was kind of fun. But spam is definitely a big thing on the menu there. And so it was fun to eat dinner with the manager. And she ordered kind of for me at that hotel. She said, okay, let's try some of these, you know, most the most Hawaiian dishes they had there. So that was kind of yummy. So that was fun. And that hotel is it's a little bit off the beaten path. It's not in downtown Waikiki, which I guess, you know, gets horrible traffic. Sometimes it was crazy just going a few blocks. There's a lot of traffic there and people are pretty laid back. So <laughs> I think maybe that contributes to the traffic. It just people aren't in a hurry and they just take their time. And um, so the double tree is a little bit out of the city. So you get a little bit more of the greenery and a little bit more space, which is kind of nice. Um, again, it's only, you know, 10 minute walk to get into downtown, but it is a little bit off, but they set me up in a room that was kind of, they called it their penthouse. And it had this unbelievable deck outside that was the same size as my, room practically and it wow. had, yeah and so it had a beautiful view of a lot of the Waikiki tall tall skyscraper hotels and then you know in between them and around them you could see the ocean peeking through and then there was you know diamond head off to the left and I mean it was amazing so so Definitely you needed fun. to come up and have somebody like take some pictures of you with a glass of champagne <laughs> standing on your penthouse balcony right I took a few. Then your family would just be a little bit more jealous. A little jealous, yeah. I did take a couple pictures and took a panorama. Again, we had rain a couple of the days. I went out there to go work one day and opened it up and thought, oh, it's pouring down rain. I guess that won't work. <laughs> but yeah, so we that was a fun property. It was kind of a cool, cool location with a great view if you can splurge for that, like if you're doing a couple's getaway or something. But they also have suites there for families that work well. And then one of my favorite, favorite properties is a new property. When we got over to Kauai, we stayed at the Hilton Garden in Kauai, which has only been open for about nine months. And they just did an amazing job with that property. It is considered beachfront, although, you know, it's a public beach. So it's kind of a state park right there in front of the property, which is really cool because there's a lot of green space, picnic tables, there's, um, you know, shelters and bathrooms even and you know, showers to clean off your feet and everything. So it's a total public beach, but it's right there on property. So you kind of can stay at a, you know, more affordable hotel, but you get beachfront property. So it's really cool. And um, one of the things they did there that I loved was we greeted the morning with, they have a cultural advisor. And so we got up at, you know, 630, we went out and joined him. And he told all about kind of the Hawaiian culture of the area because it sits the property also shares property with a um, like Hawaiian native cultural site. And so we walked down there and there's all these plaques that tell you about it. And he chanted in as the sun rose. And wow. it, was just, it was really an amazing experience. It was fun. So, and that's part of just staying there. So, so I think it's a great property for families. They've got some pretty pools and um, like the beach that it's on is Lydgate Beach, which is, you know, a common one that people say is good for families. There's a little lagoon, so it's good for babies and toddlers. That's good. I remember when we were on Maui, we stayed at the Sheraton on Kanapali. I'm not very good <laughs> that's at where the I Hawaii. stayed. Yeah. So, oh, you did? That's where we so stayed. Did you- <laughs> So remember they had the sunset ritual that they did there? Yes, I do remember that. Yes. And then they do like the the cliff dive off of the black, black rock. rock. Like, yeah. That 
So that was super cool. It's just nice to integrate some culture plus amazing pictures. I think it, it, it really is amazing. That's one of the things about Hawaii. It's hard to believe it's a U.S. state and all the islands are so different. But the fact that they still, you know, have this great, you know, roots in their culture is great. So anyways, Sounds but we are. Fun. Yeah, but we are not going to be talking about Hawaii today. We're going to be talking about Vegas, which I'm sure there's some great hotels in Vegas that we should talk about. Yeah, it's one place I've been so many times, but not with kids. So Megan uh, has, and she's going to share some insights with us. Yeah, let's talk to Megan. All right, so today we're here with Megan Riston, and she's a travel writer and a mom to three kids, Noah, Eden, and Jonah. Megan believes that just because you're a single mom doesn't mean you can't take your kids around the world. And she blogs about family travel, food, and more at mommytravels.net. She's also a writer for Travelocity USA Today, 10 Best Traveling Mom, and she buys cars. So welcome, Megan. Thank you for having me. We're excited to chat with you today, but... Before we get started uh, talking about traveling around the world, I know that you have kind of a big adventure coming up, but do you want to tell us about yourself and your family a little bit? Yeah, for for a decade and a half, we were a military family. And so we've moved a lot and had some really odd opportunities to travel. And so that's kind of how I got into it. So I've taken the kids to quite a few countries and a lot of times we just wing our trips and stumble our way through them. And so I started a blog to maybe help other people have a more uh, put together trip. And where are you based now? Are you in Portland? Yeah, I've been in Portland, Oregon for about five years. Um, But we've also lived in a bunch of different states. So Idaho, Mississippi, Texas, I'm from, I'm from West Texas. So that's the accent you hear. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Florida, Nevada. So we've kind of been all over the place. Nice. Well, Kim's now intrigued me that what is your big adventure? Is that something that you can talk about? Oh, yeah. So the kids and I are headed to Thailand at the end of March for spring awesome. break. Awesome. Will yeah, you be there really for excited. a week or two weeks? We'll be there for about two weeks. Um, the time change is pretty severe. So originally I thought, well, we'll just do a week. But then I thought, well, I don't want to get over there and then waste two days sleeping because the kids do have a hard time with the jet lag. and so. I try and be conscientious about that when we're when we're planning something to another country. And so we have a couple of days built in to just sleep when we need to sleep and do a few things, hopefully. And you, you have to fly standby, too, I think. So that does that affect things a little bit? We do fly standby. So when I'm trying to pick a trip on standby, I'm looking for flights with a lot of empty seats and something that's fairly direct because the more legs of the trip we have to catch, the harder it is for us to get somewhere. Um, and the kids are, although my oldest is 16, he cannot fly by himself. So if the kids were a little older, we could split up and that would make things a lot easier. But, um, unfortunately we have to have four empty seats on every single flight we get on. So luckily for us, there is a direct flight on Delta from Portland to Japan. So we're going to fly standby to Japan. And then we're going to fly from Japan to Singapore also on standby. And we're going to spend about a day and a half in Singapore. And then uh, from there, I'm actually going to buy plane tickets because Delta doesn't fly into Thailand. So we'll go uh, from Singapore to Phuket, Thailand, and then Chiang Mai, Chiang Mai. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, which is also in uh, Thailand. And then Bangkok. And then once we're done in Bangkok, we'll fly back to Singapore where we'll fly standby home. Yeah, definitely going to be an adventure. I bet you guys are going to have fun. And I'm looking forward to following along on all the photos. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. I mean, I'm hoping we get to like swim with elephants and do some of the different tours that take you to. uh, There's a bunch of little islands. And so it should be really good. Yeah, just those views of the islands like around Phuket, just so amazing looking. So, but I guess be prepared for for crowds and things when you're in the city, especially Bangkok, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to go um, get immunized. You have to have quite a few shots to go over there. So, yes, yeah, I haven't told the kids that yet. (laughs) 
I was hoping that um, our typhoid shots were still good. When we went to Honduras, we had to have quite a few shots, and one of them was typhoid. But unfortunately, that one doesn't last as long as other ones, so we have to get it again. It's been too long. <laughs> At least you're getting a shot. I had to do the pills, and they were not fun, so... Well, we had to do malaria pills at different times, but now apparently there's a shot. Oh, wow. Very nice. Well, it sounds like you're off for an adventure, but we're going to talk to you now about somewhere locally, I guess, or domestically that you know quite a bit about, and that's Vegas. So how often have you gone to Vegas? So I go to Vegas two, about two to four times a year. Um, I go down there for work. I like to take the kids down there. That is actually one of the places we were stationed. So we lived in Las Vegas for a year and a half, and we still have friends there that live there year round. And so we really like going down there. I have to say, I spent a lot of time in Vegas early in my career because it's such a big convention city. I think when one of the first years that I was out of school, I think I spent like at least a month or more, you know, throughout the year in Vegas. But it's definitely changed a lot. I know at the time. Uh, it was not a place to bring kids. Um, but what do you think now? Like, what is the right age to bring kids to Vegas? So I don't think there's a, a necessarily a specific age. Um, the nice thing about Vegas is you have a lot of different options. So if you're taking a preschooler kid, you know, they have a lot of every shopping center has a playground. Like at Tivoli Village, they have a playground. And that's a really fun upscale shopping center that moms will love. Uh, Town Square is near the Strip, and it has a lot of the uh, shops that you want to shop at. I mean, that's one of the big things about Vegas is shopping, and they have a not just a playground, but also a little splash pad, which is great for kids. But let's say you have a baby. I would wait until they're at least six months old because there are daycare facilities around Las Vegas. And if your child is six months, they will take your child. So you could potentially check them into, it's called Kids Quest, and and then you could have a, a parent's night out. Um, and I and my kids have been, I've used them and it's a pretty impressive facility. So it's really well run. Um, it's not cheap, but it's worth it for your night out, I think. Very cool. Yeah, I, I've been to Vegas a few times, you know, kind of like Tamara for work things. And I, I never thought of it, thought of it as a family spot, but I know that you have been so Definitely interesting. But before uh, we talk about more about doing things with kids, what about hotels? Because that's one of the things I think about with Vegas is that there are a lot of hotels. So do you have some favorite ones? I, I do have some favorites. And it's funny. Um, I told the kids I was going to be talking about this. And I said, well, what's y'all's favorite hotel? What was your favorite when you think back? We stayed in a lot of them. And they said that the Golden Nugget is their favorite. Really? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, in the middle of their swimming pool, they have a tank full of sharks. So you can swim around and around this tank and look at the sharks. So essentially you're swimming with sharks and then they have a body slide that takes you right through the shark tank. So you're, yeah. so, I mean, it must've really made an impression on them. So I thought that was so funny because it, it's not necessarily a big pool. Um, and a golden nugget certainly isn't the nicest place to stay in town. You know, it's in the old, older part of town, Fremont street. Um, but there's some perks, you know, it's way cheaper to stay there. They did, completely remodel back in 2008 and nine, I think. So you're not staying in an old rundown hotel. It's, it's pretty great. And then of course on Fremont street, there's, they've got the big lights, the huge lighted ceiling, which is always interesting to watch. And then they have all these street performers out there or people dressed like celebrities. So it's, it's pretty fun down there. It's good to know. I think the first the first time I went to Vegas, I went downtown, and uh, it was the only time I've ever hit the jackpot. But it was my first time in Vegas. I was like, I don't know, 23 years old. I had no money, and I was playing nickel slots with one nickel at a time. So my jackpot of I was like three buckets full of nickels, which was like $50 or mm -hmm. something like that. So That's awesome. Now it's all done by card. So, you know, you don't have to fill a bucket. It's just on card. Then you stand in line and cash it in. It's not very it's kind of took some of the excitement out, but yeah. I guess it's more convenient than handling, you know, millions and millions of <laughs> Three coins. Three buckets so. of nickels, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then another hotel I like is the Trump Hotel. It's set slightly back off the strip. It's near the Wynn Encore and the Fashion Show Mall. And the great thing about that is it's smoke-free. So that is the downside of staying in any of the casinos is your kids are going to be around cigarette smoke. 
Yeah. Uh, so this is a great way to avoid that is staying at Trump. Trump I feel like especially I, I, the, one of the last times I was there, I stayed at the Hard Rock and that place was awful when it came to smoke. But I found some like like the wind definitely it didn't strike. It doesn't hit you the same way, I think, because they pump in fragrance and, and stuff more than some of the others. But yeah, smoke is definitely a big negative uh, when it comes to hotels. I mean, it's, yeah, it's going to be hard to avoid it. I mean, whenever you go eat somewhere, you're going to be going into in and out of other casino hotels. And I mean, you are going to be around cigarette smoke. So and then my other two, probably my two favorite hotels, um, the Venetian and the Cosmopolitan. And I noticed that there was tons of kids at the Venetian. We stayed there for a couple of days on my birthday one year. And um, there were just there were kids everywhere. And they have several pools. And that's always fun for the kids. And then the mm-hmm. Cosmopolitan, I just like staying there. So I remember once staying at the MGM and they had like a, they had some really nice pools and the like a lazy river and things like that. I mean, I wasn't there with a kid, but I I did I was kind of surprised by how nice the pool was because some of the hotels like uh, I remember once staying at like Treasure Island and that that's just such a like bare bones kind of pool. So um, yeah, there's a couple of um, places that have really amazing pools. Mandalay Bay has a great pool. They've got a lazy right. river and they have they a have wave. A wave- yeah, wave pool too. Yeah. The only problem with the one at Mandalay Bay is the is the uh, height requirement to get in the wave pool. The waves are pretty big, and so mm. we went one time, and only one of my kids could get in the wave pool. The other two were too small, so then they're kind of mad and irritated. Mm-hmm. But over at Monte Carlo, you have almost a smaller version of that, and so they have a, a lazy river and a wave pool, and because it is smaller. All three of my kids could get in the wave pool because there was no, I don't believe there was a height requirement. Hmm, That's good to know. I was thinking of um, New York, New York, since they've got that roller coaster, right? I wondered how that would be for families. I don't know anything about it. I'm just curious. You know, I've never stayed there and I've never done the roller coaster, so I don't know. (laughs) Well, I know the first time I stayed in Vegas, I stayed at the Circus Circus. I don't even know if that's still around, but it was awful. It was so awful. (laughs) They had a, they had a, um, kind of like a big top inside but they also had an indoor roller coaster and uh let me tell you when you're an adult like they're on business to be surrounded by that was just so not fun you know i i have mixed feelings about it we have done circus circus we haven't ever stayed there they have a newer tower so if you are going to stay there be sure you get put in the new part because the older part is really old and it as far as i know has not been refurbished which means back in the day when everyone could smoke in the rooms it just is what it is. Um, and then they've got the fun dome and it does have a lot of rides and our kids did have fun there, but again, it's really, it's very dated. Yeah. yeah maybe you just go and do the fun stuff and not, not stay there. So do you yeah. have, like, there are definitely, you know, speaking of fun things, there are definitely like a lot of kind of free attractions. Just, I mean, it's just such a spectacle just walking down the strip. Do you have um, some suggestions on what some of the free attractions and things to do would be in Vegas? There, are, there is a lot of free stuff. The playgrounds, there's quite a few playgrounds that are well done. The conservatory inside the Bellagio is beautiful, and that's free. And, of course, the fountains out in front of the Bellagio, you can watch the, the water dancing, and that's free. The Blue Man Group performs at the Monte Carlo, but they do this thing where they walk through the casino before their show around 6.15. That's cool. And so you kind of get this free, quirky Blue Man show. The volcano still goes off. That is something that happens. The The pirate ship no longer does anything. Uh, the Treasure Island pirate mm-hmm. ship show. Yeah. And the volcano is uh, what? The Mirage? Yeah. The volcano is out in front of the Mirage. So, and again, it gets really crowded. So that's maybe one of the perks at staying at the Wynn or the Palazzo because you would have a view probably from your mm. hotel room and you could just watch it from your room. What about... Where did they have the Tigers? Was that Caesars or is that somewhere else? Let's see. The Tigers are at... Um, Mandalay Bay, right? No. Well, there was a Tiger at Mandalay Bay. No, at MGM. I don't know if it's still there. Oh, that was the Lion. Yeah. The Tigers, it was wherever well, the, sh- not, the show used to be. They're not free anymore. Um, it's at the Mirage. And you have oh, to pay Mirage, to get right. into it's Siegfried and Roy's Secret Garden. Okay. And you do have to pay. But back there, they have quite a few animals. They have dolphins back there. They've got, 
let's see, what all do they have back there? I can't remember. It's been a really long time since I went, but it was really, really well done. It was such a surprise to find that in Vegas. I mean, it's really pretty back there. Um, and we didn't pay to do the, like, to interact with the dolphins, but you can still see the dolphins without paying to interact with them. I know also, you know, you mentioned shopping, and I know there's like an MG, M&M store and I think a Lego store too or something. And even though you'd probably end up buying something, um, they're fun stores to walk through with kids, right? Yeah, the M&M sport, store is really cute, and it ends with a three or four day movie that kids like. Um, there's also a Hershey one now too, Hershey's Chocolate World. It's mm-hmm. inside the New York, New York um, And again, you can walk through, you can create your own chocolate bars. So that's, I mean, granted, you had to pay for that, but. So are there any favorite, you know, Vegas, you hear a lot about shows. So are there any favorite shows that would be good for kids? Because some of them are definitely adult focused. I think my favorite one that I've taken my kids to was Mystere. And um, it is a Cert de Soleil show. And it's just, it's so good. And it's at Treasure Island, I believe. Again, the Beatles love the Cirque du Soleil show. That's really good. The Michael Jackson show, another Cirque du Soleil show, is at um, Mandalay Bay, and it's really well done. So I would kind of stick towards the Cirque du Soleil shows. And then, of course, the Blue Man group. Kids love Blue Man. Yeah, those are fun. I think the first time I saw them was in Vegas. Oh, and Recycle Percussion is there, and that's a drum show, and that's a great one for kids, too. What about a magic show? Are there any magic shows that are good for kids? Yeah, uh, let's see. There's one I saw. We've seen it twice. It was so good. I know David Copperfield is performing in Vegas now, but I've never seen him either. Yeah, it's hard to know, like, because you don't want women coming and losing their clothing. I know Penn and Teller (laughs) is definitely not kid friendly. I've heard the Chris Angel show is not good, so I would not go to that one the nathan burton comedy magic show that's the one i would take kids to it's at planet hollywood and chances are you might have seen him on what is it america's got talent and he's just really good really funny there's a pet show that's really cute and that would be super cheap i think that's at planet hollywood too popovich comedy pet theater and kids would love that yeah, kids go crazy. I mean, watching dogs do tricks, your kids are going to completely lose it. Like, <laughs> I don't, you know, I personally am not a pet person, but my gosh, my kids are. So <laughs> so we talked about some of the free things and obviously some of the shows. Do you have any money saving tips that you could share? You know, it, it definitely pays off to look at Groupon, Living Social. Those, those are both really awesome. I mean, you're going to find deals on there all the time. I know when we spoke to uh, Bethany a while ago about Priceline too, she had said that you can get really good hotel deals on Priceline. I like Mm. hotels tonight, but Mm. you usually can't get them until like the last minute. So yeah, like five days out. Gold Star is a good one to get tickets on. And then a lot of these shows offer different discounts. So every Cirque du Soleil show has a military discount and that could be as much as half off. Aren't there, there's also a couple of things I've heard of, you know, that you can get these coupon books that can sometimes save you stuff, but there's also those like booths that I see people lining up for. On oh yeah. The strip. They, they do have the ha- half price ticket stands. Um, there's one near the Coke bottle. So if you're going to go do the M&M, the free M&M activity at MGM, I believe there is a half price ticket stand right when you walk inside near that Coke bottle. So those would just be like half price tickets off of um, yeah, and off be, the shows? Yeah, yeah, it's whatever shows haven't sold out. And so okay. you just walk in, you see what's available. Um, Is that and it'll same be day? day. Mm-hmm, okay. Same day. So it's exactly like the half like, price ticket stands in New York City. Right. And then uh, isn't there, you know, like, I don't know if it's through like the Vegas Tourism Board or can you get like a coupon book, like I said, or like a discount card or something? I seem to recall somebody did that once to save on like buffets or deals or something. Um, I, I can't speak to if there's a card. I do know that a lot of times when you check into a hotel, they're going to hand you a like little magazine with coupons in it. So okay. you shouldn't have to pay for any type of card. They should give you like a little coupon book when you check in so 
Cool. So what about food? I mean, I know when I first started going there, it was all about buffets. And now there's just so many amazing celebrity chef restaurants. I mean, I've had kind of mixed experience at them. Sometimes it's like, you know, the, the chef may not spend a lot of time there. So it may not be the same level as uh, you might find at one of their, like their flagship restaurants. But what do you have any favorite restaurants or buffets or things that are good for families? Yeah. So um, again, this was a question I ran past my kids. So their favorite Las Vegas buffet is at the Flamingo. And at the Flamingo, there's a chocolate fountain on the buffet and there's also cotton candy. Mm, fun. So that's their favorite one. Uh, my favorite buffet is the one at the Cosmopolitan. It's probably also the most, well, one of the most expensive in town, but man, it's really well done. I always take my kids to Pink Taco inside the Hard Rock. We go to Firefly quite a bit during happy hour. That's a tapas restaurant. And it's also off the strip. It's back towards, if you were headed to Hard Rock, it's that direction. Mm -hmm. And they do a great happy hour. So for breakfast, I like to take the kids to Hash House of Go-Go. It's just these big, massive, heaping portions of breakfast. And it's just funny. And um, everyone should probably split a plate. <laughs> Another place that I like to take the kids for breakfast is Pepper Mill Restaurant. And it's just this old school um, restaurant and it's really colorful. So like the, the little bottle of sugar on the table, the sugar is going to be all these different colors. And just when you look around, it's just a really colorful restaurant. So it's kind of fun for the kids. So th those are the ones off the top of my head. I like China, uh, China Poblano inside the Cosmopolitan. It's Chinese food and Mexican food, and it's really good. <laughs> I'd be up for that one. Yeah. So what about if you're kind of, you know, you want to get out of the city a little bit and you're done with the strip and sort of the Vegas feel and you want to kind of explore beyond. Are there any day trips that are good or, you know, that make sense out of Vegas? There are. See, I would say head out to the Red Rocks. That's um, massive Red Rock formations. I mean, that's why they call it the Red Rocks. and. Um, it's worth driving through and maybe going for a hike. If you don't want to pay to get in, it is like a state or national, I think it's a state park. And so you have to pay to get in. There is a section out in front of it called Calico Basin and they have a, you can hike for free out there. And, uh, but one of the neat things out there is there's a lot of rock climbers. So if you're into rock climbing, that'd be a great place to go. Ooh, to marry or if, Hannah. <laughs> or yeah. if you just want to watch other people rock climb. Um, and then another neat place is, see, what's it called? The Valley of Fire. And that is similar to Red Rocks, a little different, has all these amazing rock formations. And your kids can climb all over these rocks. And we used to, when we lived there, we camped out there on a regular basis because it was just such a cool area. And that's up north. So what about Hoover Dam? I think a lot of people do that as a day trip, don't they? Yeah. Um, we actually have never done the Hoover Dam. We, when we lived there, so what's nice is it used to be a huge hassle, but they built a huge bridge and rerouted traffic. So your general traffic trying to leave the area no longer go over the Hoover Dam. So it's much easier or it's much quicker to get in and out of that area. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a phenomenal structure. So I would definitely, we've seen it a bunch of times. We just never took a tour. So I would look and see, um, it depends on the threat levels, like oh, okay. levels. I yeah. hate to bring that up, but depending on the different levels, that'll affect what kind of tour you can get. Um, you know, a lot of parents are going to remember these amazing tours that they took of the Hoover Dam. That is not the tour that you can take now because it is a huge structure and they want to keep it safe. So you're not necessarily going to be able to go inside and see all this stuff. So, Yeah. How long Sad a drive is it out there? Probably about 45 minutes. Okay. So you can do it as a day trip. I seem to recall, I did it with my friend once, but I cannot, I mean, she drove, I was just along for the ride, but so I couldn't it, remember. You know, and a lot of people say that the Grand Canyon is a day trip from Las Vegas. You can get to part of the Grand Canyon in a shorter time than other parts of the Grand Canyon. But it is a really long drive. I would never say that that's a day trip. That's oh. an overnight trip. Yeah. Yeah. They With say that kids, that's overnight. You can do Disney, Disneyland from there too. And there's like a bus that takes you, I think, isn't there? Or LA or. Wow, that you know, seems far too. 
it is really far. And depending on the traffic and the day you go, I mean, instead of it, it can just turn into an all day drive because of traffic. Yeah. Traffic's really bad between LA and Las Vegas. So one thing to keep in mind is, you know, if it's a Friday, everyone's headed from LA to Vegas. Traffic's going to be really bad going that way. If it's a Sunday, everyone's going home after partying in Vegas <laughs> all weekend. Yeah. It's going to be really bad going back to LA. Good point. So do you have any other top tips for visiting Vegas with kids? You know, I do have some tips. I would keep your kids really well hydrated. It's just, it, it's very hot there, obviously, but it's very dry. And so your kids can quickly become dehydrated. Um, everyone needs sunscreen, even if you're planning on being indoors most of the day. I mean, the sun is just really brutal. So sunglasses, sunscreen, and water. And then also, I don't walk my kids down the strip. There's two reasons. The first reason is because if you've ever been to Vegas, you know that there are men standing on the street handing out cards. Yeah. And all the cards are inappropriate pictures of women. And these men don't care who they're handing the cards to. If they see a guy, they're going to hand it to him. My So one tried to hand one to my oldest son when he was like nine or 10 years old. And it's just horribly inappropriate. And then even if they don't hand it to him, people drop them on the ground. So yeah. Depending yeah. on where you're at, there's inappropriate pictures laying all over the ground. So, And then the other reason is it takes a really long time to walk from one casino to another. And it may look close, but it's not. And you're going to wear your kids out so fast walking around in that dry heat. And so I would grab an Uber or a Lyft instead. And if you rent a car, there's ways to uh, drive around without going up and down the strip, which is just keep it in mind. Because once you get on the strip, it's going to be slow going. So. If you're, right. if you're in a hurry or you have a show reservation or dinner reservation, try to avoid getting on the strip. And don't most strip hotels, though, offer val free valet parking, too? Not anymore. Oh. Yeah. That changed. So, unfortunately, I believe none of them do. Uh, Isn't that such a bummer? <laughs> yeah. It used to make it easy, you know, to rent a car. You could be like, go... As that long was, as you weren't staying overnight, you know, it wasn't a problem. That was one of the cool things about living there is, you know, if you, when we lived there, if you wanted to go eat, you're pretty much going to a casino. Yeah. And so we were in and out of casinos all the time, but we could just pull up and valet for free. It was awesome. But I was just there um, earlier this month or earlier in January and it's gone. I don't know when they changed it, but now you have to pay. Oh, that is a bummer. And I know the cab lines would always be super long. I mean, I was always there for big trade shows, but even still, like you could easily wait half an hour in a cab line. Yeah. So what's interesting, um, when I was there in January, what they've done is you have your cab line and then your Lyft and Uber people have to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I'll just use the hard rock as an example. I was over there having lunch at Peak Taco and when it was time to leave, I called an Uber. Well, I went out front thinking, that's where it's going to pick me up. But no, that's for the cabs. So instead I had to walk back and there's a section of the parking garage that, and sure enough, it's marked and it says Lyft, Uber, or ride share. So if you're not sure, ask somebody and they'll tell you, tell you where to uh, either get the cab or get the lift because they have split them up. I remember that when I was there for CES last year. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, lots of great tips. Can you tell us if a family does decide to make the trip and they want a family photo to remember their trip to Vegas, where would you recommend your favorite places to take a family photo? You know what? I think the Bellagio is my favorite place. Um, I would walk to the front of the Bellagio as if you're going to walk into the hotel, but instead walk towards the fountains. And there's you can step up and when the fountains are going off, that, that would be a cool picture to get your family with the fountain going off in the background. And then also inside the Bellagio is the conservatory and it changes seasonally and they put all these beautiful plants in there. I mean, they really go all out. There could be a hot air balloon or it might be the 4th of July and it'll be all themed out American or anyway, it's just, it's a kind of a neat place to pose your kids and take a picture. And then right around the corner from that is, I believe the world's largest chocolate fountain. And we, we like to take pictures that it looks like the like you stick your head up and open your mouth, like the chocolate's mm -hmm. pouring into your mouth. It's just kind of funny. So, mm -hmm. so that I would, I just recommend going to the Bellagio. Cool. Well, we have one more question that we ask all of our guests and that is what do you wear when you travel? 
what do I wear when I travel? That's a great question. Um, do you have any favorite brands or shoes or t- style of clothing? Well, um, for shoes, I would say I really like Reef flip flops. They have the little bump in them, so they're kind of orthotic. Instead of wearing like a f- flat, bare bones flip flop, I like mm-hmm. I like I'm a flip flop gal, and so I like having the extra support. So Reef flip flops. Um, I wear cowboy boots all the time. So. What's your favorite cowboy boot brand? Do you have a favorite? Maybe. Um, no, I don't think I have a favorite. <laughs> Coral? Corral? I'm not sure how to say it. <laughs> I always travel with the cardigan. So in case I get cold. I'm trying to think what else. Jeans. I like my Miss Me jeans. <laughs> but I don't wear them on the airplane because when I go through security, I do not want my bottom padded down because I've got (laughs) bling all over my jeans. Those need to be packed in the suitcase. (laughs) I think somebody else mentioned that once on our podcast. Look, I've had a couple of really thorough pat downs because of my jeans and you know, I like to look good, but I'm like, you know what? But if you had your fear TSA pre-check and you don't have to go through that, then you can wear your jeans. (laughs) So if people want to follow your travels, where can they find you? Uh, I blog at mommytravels.net. Is that your handle on social media too? On some of my social media is Mommy Travels, and then some of it's my name, Megan Riston. Um, But you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest as Mommy Travels. And then you can find me on Twitter as Megan Riston. Oh, and you can find me on YouTube too as Mommy Travels. Great. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for sharing all about Vegas with us and good luck on your Thailand adventure. Thanks. We'll have to have you back on for that one later on. Yeah, let's, uh, it'll have to be a few days after I get back. (laughs) We'll we'll let you recover. (laughs) It's crazy because going over there, we lose a day, but coming back, you know, we gain a day. So I told the kids, I was like, we're going to travel into the future. (laughs) Yep. And then go back in time. Yeah, we're going to go back in time. (laughs) Cool. And we'll have a great trip. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Okay. So we are back with our tip slash app of the week, um, which is kind of both. And since we're talking about Vegas, I just wanted to bring up anyone that hasn't listened to episode 26 with Bethany from Flashpacker Family. She gave us some really good Priceline tips and she has found some really good uh, deals in Vegas. Uh, using Priceline. So I just wanted to say, if you are going to Vegas, go back and listen to episode 26. You can find it on vacationmavens.com. And then hopefully you'll find some great deals and save some money. Yeah, I feel like I remember some of her deals that she mentioned in Vegas and she's got some great ones. So that's a good episode to for everyone to check out. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who, you know, sent in messages or emails and questions for our anniversary episode. We are going through them. We're really looking forward to answering them on our special anniversary episode, celebrating our one year anniversary of Vacation Mavens. So thanks again for being a part of this with us. And we will chat with you next week. Take care. 